Hi, this is John Brock with Brockworks Incorporated, a virtual design and construction company located at Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. And in this video, I'm going to show you an overview of how we use the Trimble RPT 600 and SketchUp in our workflow. So as builders, we need to be able to lay out and stake the corners of our houses. And as designers and 3D modelers, we need to capture the topographic data uh, in order to create site models. Uh, for example, this is a house that we're designing uh, and getting ready to start building at Smith Mountain Lake. And um, we used it to in order to generate the model that you're seeing here um, in this rendering. So let's look at SketchUp. So this is an aerial view of, of the property on Smith Mountain Lake. Obviously, lots of waterfront, gorgeous property. So this is the plat that we received from our client and we received it, received it in a PDF format which we have PDF importer that allows us to import PDFs into SketchUp and it maintains the text and everything. If we brought in a CAD file, we wouldn't be able to read this text, which is helpful when you're uh, doing the modeling. Um, so we, we bring this in, it comes in as a group and we uh, scale it in SketchUp. We have plenty of known dimensions in here. I just use this long property line uh, as the dimension that we went by. And um, so we scaled it up to that point, and then what we decided to use was that we had two iron pins, one in the front and one in the back. And this is what we would use as control points uh, for the RPT-600 to once we know these two points, we can go anywhere on this property and it knows where we are. Uh, so what happens was this is a really particularly tricky uh, lot in the sense that it's a, a triangular shaped boundaries that we can build within. We have a minimum building line on the side property line. We have a, a minimum building line on the front and on the back at the lake, we cannot go past the 803 contour. That's the floodplain, which is this contour line roughly in here that the previous um, survey had showed uh, is the 803. So a triangle like that is just really difficult to design in, in tight spaces like that. So luckily I teamed up with my uh, partner and colleague up in Canada, Dwayne Addy, who came up with a concept uh, that fit really thinking outside the box. And um, so it's, it came out great, but the clients are loving it and we're, come, we're down in the final stages of the design. Uh, so that worked out great thanks to Dwayne. So um, this is the existing site. And this is what the, the data gave us. And I generated this 3D site model based on it. But just to kind of graphically show you, these are the two control points on either end that we found those pins and then we set up the RPT. Now, I did not model this. Uh, somebody didn't put it up on the warehouse, thank God. But what you wanna do is have a triangle that's you know uh, between 45 and 30, 135 uh, degrees so that it's a good triangle, not like real sharp. Um, so we set up, got our control points in here and set up the RPT here. Once we shot those two points, we could collect data along the way. And so what we do is uh, literally just walk around the property. I, we walked along the edge of the street so that when I did this, I would know where the edge of the street was on both sides. Um, and then uh, what you're seeing here, this is the property line boundaries and this is the minimum building line boundaries um, that we draped onto this property. Uh, but the shot points that you're seeing here, we literally walked along the street, walked along the top of the riprap, walked and just zigzagged the property in order to uh, uh, collect all these points. So the RPT is robotic and it's shooting at a prism or it's, it's following a prism that's on a story pole that we're carrying around with us that has the uh, uh, tablet PC attached to it. So we can stand in a place, get it plumbed up and then collect it and then just walk to the next spot. So we just traverse the site. You can see how we hit these swales in here um, that were kind of crucial. And then another crucial spot was this um, embankment that's here because we got a driveway that's going to be coming in uh, through here. So this is the existing site and if we look in Entity Info in SketchUp we can see that I've got a volume being reported here for this chunk of earth and then we're going to be able to record that and compare it against uh, the proposed site so we can see if we've got to haul dirt in or haul dirt away. So what is our cut and fill? Um, so after we do our existing site we do our excavated site. And in this case, again, we can't go below the 803. So the stem wall in this case is at 803. And when we put our slab on top of that, that's four inches higher. So it gives me uh, four inches of, of wiggle room to make sure I'm in compliance. And then so we've got our subgrade that's eight inches down from the top of our uh, slab. 
And just like in the excavation, I come three feet around the perimeter for an overdig to get our foundation in. Um, and so just like I did with the uh, existing site, the excavated site shows the volume so I can see how much dirt is coming out of here that I have to stockpile and contend with. And then ultimately we do the proposed site and literally just uh, we, we destruct the property around uh, that we're backfilling, sort of limits of disturbance, and then literally draw along the perimeter where we want to backfill to. So we're filling up to build up to this front porch we're building up to this garage, um, tapering it back down. You can see I've got mulch beds, uh, the driveway, so I can get highly accurate quantities for how many square feet of asphalt do I have, how many square yards of, of mulch, how much grass uh, is there to sow. So we get just a ton of information. So this is sort of a, a, an overview. Like actually, if I click on that, you can see the final uh, proposed volume. So really that came out to being about 11 cubic yards of dirt uh, that was extra, which I'm sure we can waste out on site. That's not even a truckload. So um, this was just again an overview of how we use the Trimble RPT 600 and SketchUp in order to generate site models for our projects. So if you're interested in trying this yourself or want to learn more how to do this in SketchUp, feel free to hit like on this video and send me a message. Let me know if you're interested in it. I'll put together a tutorial. Thanks for watching.